Hi everyone, Corey Barker here with PhotoshopMasterFX.com. So in this video, I want to show you a really cool, quick and easy particle effect uh, that you can apply. It's really popular. I've seen it a lot online with a lot of images. Being able to apply this kind of dispersing particle effect on a subject. And we're going to actually do it by creating a custom brush using the texture. So here I've got this texture um, that we're going to use to make our brush. And first thing is want to get rid of some of the elements that are around the edge. Now, obviously I need to make some adjustments first, so I'm going to actually press Shift Command U and get rid of all the color in this image. And then I'm going to bring up Levels and we're going to really boost the contrast here. Now I want to keep some of the softer elements in there. So the subtle gray areas in the middle here, I want to keep a little bit of that, but I want to just kind of boost the overall contrast just a little bit there. There we go. Now I'm going to take my lasso tool and I don't want to use any of these elements that are really close to the edge. So I'm just going to kind of draw a selection around this. And I'm just going to do select inverse and then actually not delete, but just fill that area with white. There, there we go. And just to make any of these subtle gray areas you see on the along the edges here where the selection was, I'm going to use the gradient tool, set it to foreground the transparent, and set the blend mode for the gradient to overlay. And I'll set the foreground color to white. And I'm just going to add, bring in the gradients from the side here. Let's actually make it a radial gradient. But what it's going to do is only brighten the really soft areas there and leave a lot of the dark areas alone. That looks pretty good. Uh, so I think I'm going to do a little bit darker on the inner areas there. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So now I've got it all adjusted. Now I'm ready to go ahead and make it a brush. So you don't have to make a selection or anything like that because we've pretty much made the image black and white and some gray. The white is going to get ignored um, entirely anyway. So we'll just simply go under the edit menu and go down here and choose to find brush preset. And we'll call it particle. Always got to put in a, a one in front of everything. Apparently I do. All right, so now our particle element is now defined as a brush. So I'm going to create a new layer and fill it with white. And you can see when you select your brush, it's the brush that's already selected. So if I make my foreground color black, it just does the same, same thing in the same direction. So obviously we need to change the behavior of the brush. So first thing is to size the brush down um, using the bracket key. So I'm just going to use the uh, left bracket key to make it smaller here. And then you're going to open up the Brush Options panel. Uh, you can click on this icon in the Options bar or go to the Window menu and just choose Brush right here. Now, we're going to increase the spacing of the brush here in the Brush Tip Shape, shape, brush tip shape section and push that out a little bit like that. And then we're going to activate Shape Dynamics. I'm going to pick, take the Size Jitter all the way to 100%, Angle Jitter at 100%, Flip X, Flip Y, do all that too. You want to have as much randomization as you can um, with this element here. And let's add transfer. I'm actually going to use the opacity jitter. Sometimes I would use pen pressure. I do use a pressure sensitive tablet. And if you do as well, you probably want to try that sometime. But in this case, I'm just going to use the um, opacity jitter slider. And let's just kind of paint and see what we got here. Now you see the variation of opacity gives us this kind of cool varying dimension about it. I don't want to vary the opacity that much. So let's go undo that. So... There we go. Okay, so that's not doing too bad. Maybe nudge the flow up a little bit. Now, um, I'm going to activate scattering and check on both axes, and let's just kind of push this up a little bit, and that will give us a more dispersed particle effect there. That looks really good. Okay. So we've got pretty good um, particle brush now that we can modify. Now, what I would do at this point, when you've got the brush defined and you have gone ahead and done the settings and you've got it pretty much looking the way you want it to, you could save it as a brush tip right in here in the brush, um, new, like a new brush preset here. I wanted to save all these other properties that I've got applied to it. So we're going to save it as a tool preset, which is this very first icon in the options bar here. So go there and choose new tool preset and we'll just call it particle preset. And that's assuming I can spell right. Well, let's get it in there. There we go. Okay, particle. All right. Uh, I'm going to include the color. Mm, no, we'll go ahead and not include that. Okay. All right. So our particle brush is now saved. So let's uh, let's put it in context here. So I've got a subject here that I've gone ahead and extracted uh, from the background. You'll see in the layers panel here it is 
a subject on a white background here. So I want to get this, um, obviously with the way this position is, person's position, I want it to look like they're exploding in the particles, like they've jumped in the air and it's in the middle of this move they're exploding in the particles. So we're going to use our particle brush we just defined, but um, the first thing is I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. And we're just going to start painting in the area that we're going to have the effect kind of dispersing out. Now I'm going to make the brush bigger. I'm not changing any of the other settings of the brush, I just made it bigger. that much bigger there we go okay and I'm just brushing away the front element of the subject here maybe some down here by the leg and I can see my scattering is a bit much I'm actually gonna dial that down a little bit and this is something cool about it even if you um, even when you select the preset brush it does remember the settings but you can go in there and modify them after that as well and I think that looks pretty good so we can go back and add an adder Subtract from that in a minute. So I'm going to make a new blank layer. And I've still got my brush uh, selected, but now I'm going to so sample the yellow color here. And I'm just going to start painting. And it's going to have this exploding particle effect coming out of there. Now the problem is, it uh, actually has kind of a flat color to it. And I'm going to undo a few times here. And there's a, we obviously want it to be looking real, like it's particles that are kind of exploding out. So we sampled the yellow. I'm actually going to go also um, sample the darker yellow of the, uh, the person right here, the shadow color, basically. So now I've got both those colors in both my foreground and background colors. Now we go back to the brush settings here, and I'm going to activate color dynamics. And I'm going to go over here and push the foreground background jitter up a little bit. And that's going to allow us to kind of alternate between those colors, depending on how much you dial in. So see there. And so, so now when I do it, it's picking up both the shadow and highlight colors and has a more dimensional look to it. So it's like it's bursting out of there. There we go. And the same thing right down here. I'm going to sample the lighter gray. And then if you option... Just flip the color around. So option click and get the darker color there. So now we're getting the light and dark grays and we'll have that kind of dispersing off here. Just like that. And that's how you get the exploding person effect. There we go. So that's a little bit more down here like it's coming off of there. So pretty cool. Now want to add a little bit more dimension to this, I'm going to add a gradient overlay um, layer style. So activate gradient overlay, and we've, you notice we've got it, I've got it set to multiply with a simple black to white gradient here. And I drop the opacity down. So notice if I move the gradient around, so it's reflected is the style for the, uh, the gradient here. So if I move it around, see how it's in... Some areas are darker and some are lighter, and that's exactly what I want. Some variation of tone here, so it looks like there's some shadowing um, going on as well. Now I'm also going to add a drop shadow. And for the color, you want to go over here and, and sample the dark shadow color of the subject uh, up in here. It's a little bit darker than that. And notice I got it in color burn. You can actually move the shadow, so notice if I move it around. So I want it to be picking up the shadow of the particles. So notice when we bring the size down, so see how it's kind of a blurred shadow element of those particle elements kind of coming off of there? That's what we want. So that's looking pretty good. So then that pretty much gives us our particle effect. So, so it, it isn't just a matter of having the particle brush itself. Once you have that, that's the first part. And then it's going in and blending it with the colors using those um, brush settings to get the variation of the particles and using the color dynamics to get the variation of colors and not forgetting those layer styles to add a little bit more dimension to it as well. Now, another really cool trick, I'll show you with this cool with this particle brush once you have it. I'm gonna make a new document. And I'm gonna make the background black. Let's go ahead and make some text. I'm just gonna do a simple word. Let's do light. But let's do it in the all too stylish Trojan font. There we go. 
and make it a little bit bigger and center the text in there. All right, so I'm gonna fill the text with black. So it's option delete, fills the foreground color into the, into the text there. Let's turn the background layer off for the moment. And I'm gonna make it a 3D text layer. So let's go to the 3D menu, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And got my 3D panel. Let's go ahead and get the properties panel opened up. There we go. So let's bring the extrusion down a little bit. I want to see, I want to see the sides a little bit, but not all the way. So I'm going to select the light extrusion material here in the 3D panel. And then over in the properties panel, we're just going to bump up the reflection and shine for those background elements. I'm going to turn on my background layer as well. And we can see that. Uh, I'm going to turn off the default shadow as well. I'm just going to go in there and just bring that shadow to zero. And go into the lights section, and you'll see the infinite light that it adds by default. Go ahead and change that to a point light here in the properties panel. And then click move to view so it shows up there. There we go. And I'm just going to grab the slide tool and push the 3D light back behind the text there. And you can see because we've added reflective elements or reflective properties to the, the extrusion, we can see those sides much more defined because it's reflecting the light that we've got in there. You can even boost up the brightness of the specular highlights so if you want to see it even more. So there we go. Very dramatic. Let's say I see that. Shiny. All right. So now what I want to do is add my particle effect behind it. So I'm going to make a new layer. And we're going to get our particle uh, brush here. Make my foreground color white. Uh, there we go. And see if we need to modify any properties here. I don't know if I want to do the color dynamics in this case. Probably not. Yeah, actually I do, but I'm going to dial the intensity down quite a bit. And I'm just... Um, standard black and white. Make white your foreground color. So just press D, then X. And then there, there, there it gives you that effect there. So now I'm just going to kind of paint the particle effect behind the text here. Just something like that. I might even undo that and push the spacing out a little bit more. Perhaps even increase the scattering just so it's a little bit more dispersed. There we go. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put a blur on this. So go to um, filter, go to blur, and then choose radial blur. And we're going to do zoom, and about 10 is fine, so go ahead and click OK. And it gets this kind of a little bit of a motion to it, but I don't want it to be that intense even still. So go under the Edit menu and choose Fade Radial Blur, and just drag the slider down. This is basically undo on a slider, and it lessens the blur effect. It still has that subtle sense of motion to it as well. Now I'm going to, once again, use my gradient tool uh, in overlay mode. Let's add a little bit more of a hot spot right here in the center. So there's like a bright explosion here. And then I'm going to put a new layer above the 3D layer now. And I'm going to get my flare brush. Got a flare brush I created. And I'm just going to dot a flare right there in the middle. And that's going to let like there's a light source behind there. It's kind of letting it through. Now, one more thing I can do here is I'm going to double click on the 3D layer and go to the blending options here and just go to underlying layer and I'm just going to option click the sliders and split them and that's going to allow me to let the texture really kind of peer through that text. So notice how like the wider, wider I get it, the more of the elements kind of show through there. So it's just kind of adding a little bit more to it. So just another thing to, to do with the particle brush, many, many uses for it. In fact, if you check out the molten steel um, texture or tutorial that I just did over on my site, on my trial in Photoshop Master of X training, you'll see a very interesting use of this very particle um, effect on a molten steel image. So it's really kind of a cool thing. So it's really got a lot of uses once you create the brush and do some cool stuff with it. So hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to check out all the other um, training I've got over at my site, photoshopmastereffects.com, and of course the online premium training, which is at mastereffectstraining.com. Um, so hope you guys check it out, and we'll see you guys next time.